Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a feature called path plot on a function on the TI Inspire. So uh, this is TI Inspire CX2 CAS. It should also work on the TI Inspire CX2, um, but I think it needs to be a 2. I don't think it'll work on just the original CX. And so what I'm going to do is I'm on a graph page and I'm going to press menu and I'm going to graph a trig function. So the first thing I'm going to do, I don't actually always do this. Um, I'm going to change, so I'm in Windows, that's option, so it's menu, and then four. I'm going to change to trig, so that's option eight. And it just kind of sets it up for a, a nice trig graph, so negative two pi is the left, two pi is the right. Um, and then the range isn't super huge, which is probably good. So I'm going to do this with, uh, so I press tab. I'm just going to use cosine. So for me, it's fastest to type COS, parentheses X. Um, on the handheld, it's fastest to press the trig button. And I'm going to choose cosine of x and press enter and it's just going to graph because I haven't done anything weird yet. Okay so what I'm going to do now is press menu and then option 5 is trace. Whoa, Option 5, press 5. So I get trace and then option 4 here is path plot. And so I'm dealing with a function so I'm going to choose function. This is actually kind of weird. I only have a function but it lets me choose uh, parametric and polar anyway. I don't really know why. Uh, I'm going to press enter and you can see there's a, a little play button um, and I need to click that. I uh, wonder if there's like a quick way to start it. I don't know. Let me just press enter. Nope. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do instead is, woo. okay, I'm going to do that again. First, let me delete this point. I accidentally made a point by pressing enter, uh, which is kind of neat. Like when you're in trace mode, if you press enter um, or you click it, like paste a point on the screen. Uh, so let's see. Let's do that again. Menu five and then option four. Okay, function. All right, so I got a play button. I could just press play um, and that'll start the animation. So let me do that. And you can watch it, just kind of trace it out, which is sort of neat um, for functions. I'm not really sure why I would do this. Uh, maybe see intersection points, make it a little clearer what's going on. Um, so it's going, I'm gonna hit pause. Uh, I'm gonna reset the animation. And what I want to do this time is there's kind of an interesting feature. If you hover over this, so use the trackpad and get over here, if you can, it'll tell you uh, cursor left or right to move along the path, uh, enter a number to jump to uh, that independent value. That's what I'm most interested in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type negative uh, two pi, just like, you know, just press negative and then two pi. It doesn't really make it clear that that's where you should do it, but that's how it works. Press enter, nothing happens. I wasn't expecting that because that's the left edge. Uh, now I'm gonna press negative three pi divided by two. And you can see it plots it a little bit. And then negative pi and negative pi over two. So I really like this because you get a sense of how, if you're going to draw this by hand, like like the logical way to do that. Um, and you can keep going. So you can see like a quarter of the period each time. It's just kind of a neat little feature. Um, you can jump, so if I, I go from here to pi, it'll just trace anything that would have happened on that interval. Um, so it's a neat new feature uh, that's under the trace menu. Uh, I don't know how much I would use it, but uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.